Hello everybody and welcome to my Master Yi build video updated. Now this is for patch 8.15 and I will be sharing with you my runes, my builds, and my jungle pathing. And I'll also share with you my bands if you guys are interested in that as well. Let's go ahead and get started. When it comes to runes, I think Master Yi still uses precision as his primary rune. My current favorite rune is Conqueror still. The reason why I like Conqueror so much is because it allows me to split push, stack Rage Blade, and get stacks of Conqueror as well. It's just a really great combo that allows you to 1v1 everybody. If you don't bring Conqueror, it does weaken your 1v1 potential quite a bit, and tanks also give you problems. Uh, I've been taking Fleet Footwork a little bit lately. This was at the recommendation of another Master Yi main uh, named Danadrim. I'll put his uh, info below the stream. Fleet Footwork has some really good synergy with Celerity, which I'll talk about when I get to Celerity. And it also works on jungle camps, it works on Baron and other things like that. Uh, I don't think Fleet Footwork's a bad mastery, but I think Conqueror is the most easy to use. Feel free to experiment with that. When it comes to Lethal Tempo, I think Lethal Tempo is still pretty good, but I think Conqueror is still just better. I think Lethal Tempo is better used in combination with Warrior or your Blade of the Rune King. Uh, really, whichever one you're more comfortable with, Conqueror, Lethal Tempo, go for it. I know that a lot of Yi mains don't know how to properly stack Conquerors, so Lethal Tempo should be your other rune. Then we have Press the Attack. I've been experimenting with Press the Attack for early ganks. I don't think it's bad. I think Press the Attack's okay, but I think Lethal Tempo is a bit better. Really, the thing about Yi is all of these runes are pretty similar. Like, you can take either Press the Attack, Lethal Tempo, or Fleet Footwork. And then Conquer is a bit different, right? So those three are the same, and Conquer is different. Pick whatever is the most suitable for your style. None of those choices are wrong. Next, we have the Greater Rune. Uh, Triumph, hands down. It's the best rune. You don't need to get a better rune. Um, then we have down here, we have the three legend runes, which are actually really good. Um, you can actually swap between these as well. So typically when I'm like on autopilot, I will go ahead and grab the alacrity rune, which gives attack speed. I think that one's really simple. Uh, when they have like Kinnon and Leona or Nar and stuff like that, I will get the tenacity rune, but I don't get it very often. I would rather have the attack speed. And then when I feel like split pushing and I know I'm not going to buy any lifesteal, I will get bloodline. So typically, I think Alacrity should be your go-to rune if you don't want to think about it. And if you're anticipating some split push in the late game, Bloodline's not bad either. Now last, we have these three runes, and I think Coup de Grac is still the best rune, even though I wish it wasn't, because I still don't know how to say it. But I'm pretty sure that's the best rune, and you should definitely check that one out. Uh, you could use Last Stand, but I, I personally, I wouldn't. All right, so the secondary tree, you have some options here. Uh, the ones that I've been using the most, which are the most safe in my opinion, are Precision plus Inspiration. Uh, in Inspiration, I typically bring Magical Footwear uh, because getting those free boots is just, it feels really good. And it's about like 400 total gold when you apply the extra 10 move speed. It's just really cost efficient and pretty good. And then for my second, I like to get Cosmic Insight. The extra CDR on these is pretty good. All around, it's very, very simple. The Inspiration Tree, in my opinion, is a really safe tree to go, and it's the one that I go when I just kind of want to autopilot and do things like that. However, I do think there is a tree that is comparable or better, and I've been trying it the past few weeks. I'm not sure if we mentioned it in my last rune video, but we... Did I say video? Whatever. But we will be mentioning it now, and that is Sorcery. So in Sorcery, we go Nimbus, Cloak, and Celerity. Celerity had quite an interesting buff that gives it a lot of attack damage. When you use Highlander and you are chasing after somebody with tier 2 boots, Celerity will give you like two, or 20 AD. It's, it's quite good. And it also gives you some extra move speed, which I completely forgot about until just now. But it, it's, it's really, really strong. And then on top of that, Nimbus Cloak will give you extra move speed when casting your ultimate as well. And Nimbus Cloak is definitely noticeable. You will definitely see a difference with Nimbus Cloak. And it gives you like 6 AD or so from Celerity as well. So they synergize really well. I'm thinking that Sorcery may actually be the better page than Inspiration. Um, but feel free to take whichever one you want from like Inspiration or Sorcery. Uh, we will go ahead and take a look at Domination because I know a few people will ask about Domination. I don't think Domination is a good tree at all, but if I had to choose Masteries from it, I would take Sudden Impact and I would probably take Ravenous Hunter. Ravenous Hunter synergizes really well with Conqueror and it also heals you on your on-hit damage as well. But I really, really, really recommend taking Sorcery or Inspiration. So, my choices for somebody that just wants an easy rune page without thinking too much about it, 
is this. We have Conqueror and we have Sorcery with Nimbus Cloak and Celerity. All right, moving on. We have Domination Tree. So a lot of people have been asking me about the Domination Tree on Yi, and a lot of people have been asking about Crit Yi and stuff like that. There is currently one page that I think can work on Master Yi, and it might even be better next season, but we'll see, is to Dark Harvest. So Dark Harvest is really interesting because it synergizes really well with the new item that came out called Storm Razor. And Storm Razor actually synergizes really well with Sorcery. More on that in a second. So Dark Harvest is really good because it gives you extra damage when you come out of Alpha, you kill somebody, you pick up a soul, you kill somebody else. It, it just, it feels really good on Crit Master Yi. I would not personally bring Dark Harvest when I'm playing on Hit, I would only bring it on Crit. Uh, for our secondary rune, we get Sudden Impact. For the other rune, <laughs> You know, honestly, you can get whatever you want here. I'm starting to think Ghost Poro is probably easier to use. I find that my eyeball collection remains unstacked. This is one of the reasons I dislike the Domination Tree, because this rune slot is really hard for me to utilize. Bring whatever you want here. Uh, I'd bring Poro. For the last rune, I would bring uh, perhaps Ultimate Hunter or maybe Relentless Hunter. Uh, the reason why I'm not bringing Ravenous Hunter in this situation is because I'm not using Conquer or Gunsu's Rageblade and the healing isn't as important to me as it is when I'm using a full on hit build. Next, we have Sorcery. Um, pretty much I think Sorcery is the way to go. You go ahead, you bring Nimbus Cloak and you bring Celerity. It gives you a lot of damage. Uh, if you bring Ghost and you use like Storm Razor, you're gonna be getting like 50 AD. Like, I'm, I'm not even making it up. Celerity can give you 50 AD if you bring Ghost and Storm Razor and, and Tier 2 Boots in Highlander. It's just, it, it's actually a nutty amount of AD. Uh, very highly underestimated. Definitely try that one out. All right, so I think we pretty much finished the runes there. So after the runes, we're going to discuss Summoner Spells, great. So lately I've been looking at the summoner spells and pretty much you always want to use like flash and smite. But as for the past few days, I've been looking at ghost, especially with the synergy with celerity. Again, uh, there's another master Yi main who's been using ghost for a few weeks. I mentioned him before, Danadrim, his link's below in the description. Uh, he's been running ghost celerity for a while and he's also been combining it with storm razor. I don't think you need storm razor for that. I think that if you just run ghost, your celerity will do a lot of extra damage. Your ganks early are really good. You can start on a red buff or whatever, and you can immediately run to a lane and you can kill them. And it, it's it's pretty strong. And you can also use it in team fights. So I think Ghost is definitely a runner up um, because we don't need that instant movement speed when we're creeping around to gank somebody. Uh, if Ghost is a bit too hard for you, definitely look at Flash. When it comes to Ignite or Exhaust, a few people like to use that in the jungle. I think Ignite can be situationally okay if you're going to be invading a lot, but I really think that you want to have your mobility summoner spells like uh, Ghost or Flash. So in this particular situation, I think the best spell is... Ding! Flash and Smite. However, a good runner-up to Ghost and Smite, you can bring that as well if you're really interested. Next, we're going to talk about the builds for Master Yi. So Master Yi has a few different build paths, and a lot of people like to ask me, why do you bring Bloodraiser? Why do you bring Warrior? Why do you bring this? Why do you bring that? So the main difference between Bloodraiser and Warrior is the attack speed versus the AD, right? But Bloodraiser is great at getting objectives. If you find yourself in a game where you want to get objectives, Bloodraiser is the way to go. And also on top of that, I feel a bit slow when I run Warrior. Typically, I want to run Warrior when I'm going a more bursty build, like if I'm going to use Dark Harvest or something like that. I think Blood is pretty much the way to go in like 90% of the situations. So if I had to choose my jungle item, I would definitely bring Blood Razor. Now, what do you build after your Blood Razor? So typically, um, if I'm going Blood Razor, I'll get Gunzu's Rage Blade in pretty much every situation. I think Gunzu's Rage Blade right now is really, really, really strong still. It got nerfed. It sucks, but you know. Um, I tried to use Blade of the Rune King for a while, but I find the Blade of the Rune King works most efficiently with Warrior. So uh, my build in general when I'm running Blood Razor will be Blood Razor, Gunsu's Rage Blade, and then you're free to build whatever you want. So if you want to get more damage, you can look at getting an Essence Reaver or a Blade of the Rune King. Either one of those items will give you a good Baron solo. And then afterwards, you can build all tank. You can build like Starags or whatever. If you're looking to be more tanky, I might build like a Blood Razor, Gunzu's Rage Blade, and then instead of another damage item, I'll build like Randuin's or even a Guardian Angel. When it comes to Warrior, I would build Warrior, Blade of the Rune King, Gunzu's, and then whatever. 
That's typically how I do that. If I was going to play Critical Master Yi, I'd bring Warrior, Storm Razor, Shiv. You know what? I don't even know what you would build on Critical Master Yi because I don't think that build's very good. How about in the comments below, you tell me what you will build and I'll find the best build and I'll give it a nice little heart. So in conclusion, here are the builds that you should be looking at. I will put them on the screen. I'll put them based on how much I prefer them. My favorite build at the top, and then we will slowly go down the builds that I would least likely use. So typically in my guide videos, I never include the jungle pathing, and you guys have been really asking for the jungle pathing. So I am going to help you guys out today one time only, we will show you some jungle pathing. So blue and red team are actually very different in how your pathing and your jungle is going to go. So let's go ahead and start with blue team and I'll give you some options. You start in the red, you get a nice solid leash, you walk up into the enemy jungle, you invade their wolves, you either get a kill or you take their wolves, and then you go down and you take the crab, and then you gank bottom. That's one of my favorite um, invades there. Uh, when you're not playing against things like Udyr, it works really, really, really well. Uh, second on the blue team, I like to start on the red, and then I'll immediately walk up, walk the mid lane, run across mid lane, gank mid lane, and then after ganking mid lane, I'll go and I'll take top crab, go down into my blue, if top's ungankable, and then I will do a full jungle clear. Gromp, wolves, and raptors, and krugs. That's, a, that's more of a farming path. You get a nice solid gank on mid lane, and then you go and you start farming, and then when you go back, you can easily afford like a blood, or uh, the red smite plus a dagger or boots, right? Depending on what your runes are. Now, if we're on red team, I very rarely start on the blue buff, but let's go ahead and talk about a blue buff start. On red team, if you start on blue buff, you get a nice solid leash, you go to the gromp, and then you go down, and you take the crab. Uh, that's a very typical start that I've seen in Korean Challenger. I've been looking at it a bit. And then after you take the crab, you go in and you take the enemy's raptors. And then you can look at ganking mid or bottom. That's the more aggressive route uh, for like ganking. It's like a mix of ganking and farming. Now what I like to personally do is I like to start on red. And when I start on red, I go into the enemy jungle and I take their wolves or their blue. And then I take their blue or their wolves, whichever one I didn't take. And then we go up and we take their crab. And at the time, we try to catch the enemy and we try to kill them. Uh, it doesn't always work, but when it works, it's, it's really, really strong. And then another option you have is you can start on red. And then you can run to mid and gank mid. Or instead of going mid, you can run all the way to bot lane. And then you can kick their booty because they're not expecting it. Easy peasy. Those are your early game jungle paths. That's how I usually do it because you want to put pressure on the map really early because if you're not putting any pressure your lanes are going to lose then they're going to blame you and then it's a mid open and then you're like why did my team suck and it's because you didn't gank for them and you should probably gank for them and that's life hopefully this little guide video helped you out and if you guys have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments and i will try to answer as many questions as i can if you have any critiques or criticism or helpful suggestions for the guide please leave those in the comments as well and you can help me out i hope you all have a wonderful day and you eat plenty of vitamin c sit up straight